Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the um, Raw Review for the 26th of July, 2021. Um, I mean, it's fine, but it's kind of, even though they're back in front of people, it's back to being a show that uh, you can miss at least half of and it doesn't really matter. Uh, there's a recap of last week's uh, women's title capture from Nikki Ash. She comes out and she high fives and hugs fans on the way to ring. Uh, fans are chanting for her. She says uh, that she's always wanted to say welcome to Monday Night Raw. Nikki's happy that she's together and they're the wo- and she's the women's champion. Uh, she speaks about it being a dream come true. She said she never had the confidence to reach the top. She's afraid she'd fail. She suddenly realized if she fails, she fails. She didn't have to be a big. It didn't have to be a big deal. She says her new ad- uh, her new uh, outfit gives her confidence and. Um, she says that we all have a superhero inside of us, basically. Charlotte Flair interrupts, calls Nikki the gracious champion, wondered how she could possibly represent the company dressed that way. And she said she couldn't imagine, couldn't imagine Nikki on the Today Show without Roker, who wouldn't believe that she's champion. Crowd be- boos as Charlotte continues to rant. She blames Rhea Ripley for what happened. Charlotte notes that she hasn't even gotten uh, her feet. And then the ma- and then Nikki uh, is accused of stealing Charlotte's title. Wants a rematch at SummerSlam. Nikki wouldn't bow down to the real champion. Crowd booed and, and injustice isn't enough. And uh, Nikki's fault of the fans. And then Charlotte said the same things. And the heels always say fans until uh, Rhea Ripley interrupts. Ripley has a good reaction. She didn't think people were jealous of someone who was champion for one day. She said she noticed Charlotte got herself disqualified because she knew she was about to lose. Nikki wondered why either of them thought they could beat her, and Nikki said butterfly on her gear represents a metamorphosis, and Nikki's uh, basically in a super Marvel outfit. Sonya Deville makes her way out along with Adam Pearce. Deville makes a triple threat match for SummerSlam. Charlotte thinks this is dumb. She wants a non-title singles match against Nikki tonight, and Nikki accepts. Pierce makes it official. Charlotte attacks Ripley and knocks her out of the ring before Nikki drops Charlotte in the ring as well. Uh, Earlier in the day, Damian Priest said Sheamus didn't deserve to be champion. Sheamus makes excuses. Um, uh, And then there's an attack there. Finally, first match gets in the ring. This The, the women's segment went too long. I, I'm happy for Nikki Ash uh, in the sense of at least she is doing something. They're doing something with her, and it's new and it's fresh. But at the same time, um, that segment dragged a bunch. Anyway, Damian Priest defeats Sheamus in the nine title match just after 10 minutes. Um, this is a champion's contenders match. They're copying AEW in that way. Priest... Sykes out, Sheamus fakes a dive, uh, Priest hits a spinning se- heel kick instead, Sheamus catches him and drops him on the apron, uh, we go to a break two minutes into the match because wrestling doesn't matter to these people, Sheamus is in control and uh, Priest fights back with a clothesline spinning heel kick and uh, Sheamus uh, has his uh, face mask pop off and then Sheamus goes to the top, Priest grabs him, brings him down, big choke slam near fall. Sheamus comes back with an Alabama slam for a near fall. Sheamus goes for the clove relief, but then hits a stri- there's a strike, a strike exchange. Close near fall. Sheamus then tries pounding Priest's chest, but Priest comes back with a kick, hits the lights, and a pinfall win. Crowds into the near falls for this because they haven't seen wrestling in a while. AJ Styles and almost defeats the Viking Raiders in a non-title match tag team championship in nine and a half minutes. Um, Styles and almost did not get an entrance. Um, anyway, Eric and Ivar hit Styles with a flurry of offense, working extra hard, almost goes off the apron, uh, they give Styles the Viking experience, almost yanks Eric out of the ring, and then we go into a commercial break, um, about a minute and a half into the match, because again, wrestling doesn't matter, Eric bested Styles and gets a strike exchange, Ivar dodges a phenomenal forearm, clobbers Styles with clothesline, Styles comes back with Tornado DDT for near fall. Eric and Ivar double-team Styles before 
Ivar goes to the outside, holding almost his leg. Eric gives Styles a knee strike for a near fall. Almost manages the break um, and breaks free of Ivar. Styles tags in almost. Who gives Eric a delayed scoop slam before chucking Ivar from the ring? Almost gives Eric a tree slam. Styles tags and hits springboard for a 50 for the win. Styles and almost. Retain. We go into the second hour. Can't believe this, but we're into the second hour. That's because they waste so much time on useless promos. Ginger Mahal cuts a promo before the upcoming match. Speaking of useless promos, Mahal is disgusted at the crowd and the, the fact that they cheered Drew McIntyre clobbering Shanky with the chair last week. He wants McIntyre to apologize. McIntyre doesn't respond. Um, and Mahal said that he brings out lawyers and they plan on suing him. Uh, McIntyre tells him to shut up. He asks the crowd if they should, if he should apologize by the mistake dinner. The crowd boos. Drew's going to kill you, chant, is directed at Mahal. And anyway, Drew and Veer go at it. Uh, there's a DQ, DQ in 350. Why do you have Drew McIntyre in a match with a guy that doesn't matter going less than four minutes? Oh, that's because the booking is just trash. Anyway, Veer gets some offense, but Mahal is getting desperate, so he slides Veer a chair. Uh, McIntyre Claymore kicks the chair into his face. Ref calls for DQ. McIntyre gives the lawyer a Claymore kick as Mahal and Veer run from the stage. They award McIntyre the win because Mahal is the first one to bring the chair in. They replay uh, Eva Marie tripping uh, in Alexa Bliss's uh, playground last week week even marie tells Dewdrop drop not to worry about last week because if they won tonight they'd be closer to the women's tag titles um they wonder if anything can stop carrying across his brain of destruction on nxt apparently jeff hardy with covid last week could anyway um ta tag team champions natalia and tamina defeat even marie and Dewdrop in a non-title match in three and a half minutes Dewdrop knocks down Tamina with a crossbody. Uh, she tags in Marie so she could get the cover instead. Tamina kicks out. Uh, Lily video plays on the screen. Marie's return video is spoofed in this. Unfortunately, Natalia appears to hurt her leg during exchange with Dewdrop. Medical staff come out. The match is basically stopped after um, Tamina helped Natalia to the back post the uh, match loss. Uh, NXT carrying NXT champion carrying cross defeats Keith Lee. Lee must be in the doghouse because well he's getting defeated left and right since his return. And anyway, so Cross can't suplex Lee. Lee suplex Cross and knocks him down on his shoulder tackle. Cross dives into Lee into the side of the ring, suplex him on the outside. Uh, we are a minute into the match and we go to break. Jimmy Smith lets us know. Uh, the match lives up to the hype, and we've seen less than a minute of it, so how are we to know that? Lee tries fighting back. Cross hits a DDT for near fall. Lee fights the cross jacket and follows up a clothesline, strikes in a headbutt, running shoulder tackle. Lee setting up the spirit bomb. Cross slips out in salto suplex. Cross hits Lee into the cross jacket. Lee struggles a bit before tapping out. Cross wins. Uh, by submission, and the crowd likes Lee, but apparently the bookers don't. Uh, Sarah interviews Nikki about the match tonight. Nikki said she's no longer afraid to fail. She said she wants little boys and girls to know the hardest challenge. Uh, challenges are worth fighting for. She says no matter what happens tonight, she'll de be defending the title at SummerSlam. Ripley shows up. Ripley plans on winning at SummerSlam, but wants to see Nikki give Charlotte her best tonight. Then we go to Mansoor and Mustafa Ali defeating Mason Tibor. Remember them. Um, Mason Tibor did a pre-tape promo where they said uh, little teams like Mansoor and Ali existed to feed them. They lost the Lucha House party a few weeks ago, but they seem to have forgotten this. These are Mansoor wants a game plan with Ali. Uh, Ali just says follow his lead. Mason, Tibor, dominate Ali and Mansoor to save them from being pinned. Mansoor distracted Tibor long enough to allow Ali to come back with a spin kick. Mansoor tags in and hits Mace with a reverse DDT. But Tibor breaks up the cover. Ali saves Mansoor by wiping out Tibor. Tornado DDT on the outside. 
Mansoor saves Ali from being attacked by Mace, and then Mansoor rolls up Mace uh, in the ring for the pinfall. Ali acts surprised. Mansoor raises Ali's hand celebration. Ali is not enthusiastic. Um, and the third hour begins. Bobby Lashley responds to Goldberg. MVP speaks about Goldberg distracting Lashley. Crowd chants for Goldberg. Cedric Alexander interrupts Alexander and Lashley. Uh, distracted him by kicking him out of the Hurt Business. Remember them. Uh, we haven't even acknowledged them in uh, several months, at least six, if not more. Uh, Alexander claims Lashley did so because Lashley knew he's better. He wanted an opportunity against Lashley. Sheldon Benjamin interrupts. Benjamin notes how annoying Alexander voices. The crowd laughs at this. Benjamin wasn't here to complain about the Hurt Business. He wants to give Lashley a real challenge. He argues with MVP and tells him he didn't have time for this. Lashley grabs the mic and says uh, he'd take them both on at the same time. Two-on-one handicap match. Uh, Bobby Lashley defeats Cedric Alexander and Sheldon Benjamin in two and three-quarter minutes. Good way to kill your talent. Anyway, uh, Lashley's in control. Benjamin and Alexander work together. That didn't last long. Lashley gives Alexander a spine buster and spears Benjamin. Gives Benjamin a jackhammer and gives Alexander a dominator and pins them both at the same time. AJ Styles approaches Miz and Morrison with a proposal. Uh, almost blocks the camera so we don't see what the proposal actually is. Morrison with Miz defeats Middle in, Riddle in just under 10 minutes. Miz sprays Riddle with a drip stick and Morrison uses distraction. For schoolboy, Riddle kicks out and hits a knee strike. Riddle then knocks down Miz with a penalty kick. Miz... Attacks like a turtle and couldn't get up. Uh, and then Riddle mocks him and does the same thing. Riddle knocks down Morrison with a springboard dive styles and almost come down to the ring. Morrison uses a couple kicks on Riddle, but Riddle comes back with a power bomb and a knee strike for near fall. Riddle begins climbing the ropes, but is distracted by... Styles and grabs a scooter, almost snaps scooter in half, and Riddle is upset. Distraction allows Morrison to slam Riddle and hit Starship Pain for the pinfall win. Styles lays out Riddle with a Styles clash after the match, and the crowd chants for Randy Orton, but he didn't show up. Reginald defeats R Truth to retain the 24 7 championship that no one cares about in just under 90 seconds. Truth is, Mike for the match. Reginald decides to compete in a full suit. Comedy spots, 24-7 crew, including Carrillo, run down after the match. Reginald flips over the group and lands the top rope to escape the ring, and they look uh, confused instead of going after him. Uh, then we go Charlotte Flair defeating Nikki Ash in a non-title match, 12-34. Um... Charlotte has been granted the title match at SummerSlam, even though uh, they call this a, I guess, challenge. Uh, anyway, um, Charlotte is in full control and is not taking Nikki seriously throughout the match. Crossbody on the outside, followed by a crossbody in the ring, clothesline, and a running bulldog for a near fall. Charlotte follows up with chops. Nikki's back with the tornado DDT. Nikki goes flying crossbody. And she wins last week. Charlotte rolls through for the cover and a, and a pinfall win. Kevin Patrick tries interviewing Charlotte post-match. But she took the opportunity to make fun of Nikki. Since she's not in her league, Nikki admits she lost. And said she's almost superhero. Uh, I showed myself that I almost could have won. Um, she challenged her to a rematch next week. Charlotte accepts. Charlotte gives Nikki a cheap shot after and lays her out with a big boot. Charlotte drags... Her in to in front of a young fan who held up a Nikki Ash sign and chops Nikki before knocking her down with a big boot, and this closes the show. What a horrible ending to a lackluster event. Uh, less than two weeks, and Raw is back to being utter trash, even in front of people. We'll be back with more right after this. <laughs> 